Well, what a week. What a week of my hot water. I'm going to put a little hot water in a little whiskey. I've been sick all week, guys. Sick as a dog. <clears throat> Sunday morning, woke up with razor blades right here. <clears throat> Went out and worked anyway. Had a hot whiskey. Took some painkillers. Got some vitamin C. Figured it would move along. Things only got worse. Things are going to get worse, nurse. Things are going to get dismal. Put that hearse in reverse, nurse. You ever heard that? I think I quoted that before. Jonathan Cooper Clark. Things are going to get worse. BBC News, what's this? Just now. More than 100 Gazans killed. A food aid drop. Oh, Jesus Christ. BBC verifies analysis video footage. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't even look at the news. I can't do it. I can't fucking do it. It's fucking crazy. There's a story of um, Noam Chomsky years ago was developing uh, a pain in his jaw and in his teeth and uh, some wearing down of his teeth. He went to the doctor trying to figure out what was happening. Noam Chomsky, the great intellectual, MIT professor of linguistics and writer of many great novels. Uh, novel books, usually political, and uh, anyway, it came out that because uh, he thought he was he was grinding his teeth in his sleep, so they put a monitor on him to see if he was grinding. Because some people do that, you know, they're asleep and they go, they do this grinding action on their teeth. And there was no, he wasn't doing it. Like, this is odd. <clears throat> they discovered eventually, maybe his wife or someone, I don't know. It was every morning when he sat at breakfast and opened the New York Times. <laughs> As he was reading the New York Times every morning for decades, the man is in his 90s grinding I can only imagine I, I literally if I watched the news before coming on here you would have you would have seen Oshin Castro you know fucking Oshin Che Guevara hurling abuse at the camera Oshin explodes like Archie Fucking hell. I haven't done Archie in ages. Let me be 100% honest with you there. Bear. I love you, Bear. How's everyone in the room? Yeah, so anyway, I'm okay. I'm on uh, antibiotics. My camera isn't tonight. My camera is fucking giving me trouble. Please, no, not you. Not you, okay? I need you on my side tonight, at least. All right? Give me a fucking hand. <clears throat> um, so I'm on, I'm on antibiotics, and it finally seems to be clearing up. <sighs> Was it COVID? I have no idea. I did a test. It came out negative, but it was an old test. 
girl in the pharmacy said, well, if you got a negative, that means it's negative because the old ones, the ones that are expired, don't give you any result. So I said, okay. I don't know what the fuck it is. But until yesterday, I sounded like Sam Elliott. Do you think my voice is deep as it is? Jesus, I was down there. I was there. Say, friend, you got any more of that tasty sarsaparilla? That's where I was. I wasn't myself. I was someone else. It was the end of the trail for me, buddy. <clears throat> I was walking around as basically in character of Sam Elliott. In my day, we used to use streams for fish to fish and instead of watching TV, Twitter. Well, I'll tell you something about Twitter. A dog don't moo, and a man sure as hell don't tweet. <laughs> a man doesn't grow a mustache. The mustache grows the man. Sushi is just fish for a man who doesn't know how to build a fire. Thank you, Andre Levchon. Thank you, brother. I'm, uh, I'm nearly there. I'm nearly there. I wouldn't be doing the show if I wasn't nearly there. So I won't be smoking tonight for obvious fucking reasons. And there hasn't been much drink at all, except for the whiskeys at the beginning of the week, just to soothe. And I'm going to have one with you. This is hot water and a little bit of whiskey in here just to help, you know. Just to get through the next couple of hours. But I'm I'm pretty good. That shit closes up, guys. Closes up hard. It's kind of worrying some nights, waking up going, you know, having to breathe through my nose. I'm like, oh, shit. Kieran Kelly guitarist, great to see you, man. Member for eight months. Happy Friday, everyone. Working here, so we'll catch up tomorrow. Have a great stream. You mean you going fishing? You put the father on the wrong eye, Kieran. <laughs> Switch those. Thanks for even doing that. Most people don't even do that, so I'm not going to complain. But that's uh, that would be ocean. <laughs> it's my old German neighbor, saxophonist in Brooklyn, used to call me ocean. Ocean, you want to play chess? Can you play game of chess today, ocean? No, man, gotta go out. Ocean, you got any more of that great weed? No, dude, I'm out of it. <laughs> I sold it all. It's all out of here. Please tell us a story, Omega fanboy Ian. Um, I'm not going to tell you a story, but I'm going to give you some very exciting news tonight. Very interesting stuff. <laughs> and I'm telling you guys before anyone. There's a very interesting thing. And you guys have an opportunity before anyone else. So that's coming up soon. Great to see everyone. Galaxian became a member. Look at that. What level, man? Just curious. Just curious. Whiskey cigar level. The level. The only real level. Well, welcome, man. Afterwards, um, I hope you use the link for the WhatsApp chat because uh, that's a lot of fun. It's 
nice nice bunch there in the in the whiskey cigar lounge on WhatsApp. Very good fellas. Guy Hayton, been a heavy week. Yes, very, very heavy. Oh dear God. I swear to God, my camera thinks that's a face behind me. <laughs> You know you're getting old and ugly when a candle and a thing plaque looks more like a human being than your own ugly head. <sighs> what am I wearing in the wrist tonight, by the way? Teach Tim the ropes. What are you talking about? Tim doesn't need it to learn any ropes. I'm wearing Panerai 47 mil. This is a limited edition, uh, the 587, the Marina Militare. You like her? Do you think she's sexy? Do you think I'm sexy? Let me give it some, uh, some loom. You digging that? Yeah. Nice. Limited edition, limited to 1,000 pieces, I believe. Panerai's look good on, on this big old bastard. So they do. <clears throat> What's everyone having to drink? Are you, is anyone smoking? If you are, don't tell me because I'll get jealous. Just say, no, nah, I'm going gonna, gonna to stay off it tonight. <laughs> There's Balyar cleaning the house. The west side. Balyar clear, baby. That's Irish for Dublin. Ah, here, have a smoke, I know. You've already got the strep throat or whatever the fuck you have. Just have a fucking smoke. I think it was one of my favorite lines in the early episodes of uh, Breaking Bad. Can I have one of those? And he's like, you sure you won't? He goes, I've already got the cancer. <laughs> he takes a smoke. Here's Patricia. I was like the uh, company of females in the room. Always brighten, brightens things up. The gentler sex. Good afternoon. In line at a car wash. 50 degrees and sunny today in Wisconsin. I heard it's been sunny and cold. 50 ain't so bad. Wisconsin girl. I guess I knew that already. Andrew, my Ukrainian grandmother said, with enough whiskey and sleep, anything can be cured. Well, can I make amends to that, uh, to that little saying? With very strong antibiotics, anything can be cured. <laughs> Fuck the rest. The antibees came flying in. Hit that reset button pretty hard, man. What do you guys think of the Palm? It's the Palm 587. Looks good on, on me, right? It's a real me watch. I love it. It's got those rose gold hands. Big piece of plastic. There is another version. I think it's the 514. That doesn't that has sapphire crystal instead, so it's it's a slimmer watch. I'll just mute my phone, sorry about that. Slimmer because this this big hunk of Hesselite or whatever it is is <laughs> substantial. But it actually it gives the watch a lot of vintage character. And uh, those hands peek out. And it has display back as well, which is really fucking good. Oh my god, my camera's gonna fucking drive me nuts. 
Bounce Bear. You know, but shit. Anyway, I'm kind of loving it. It's actually for sale. It's not mine. My best friend here in Venice, Simone, has a store. He was like, listen, you should probably take it. You can pay me on the long finger or whatever because it's very you. But if one of your viewers wants it, it's 7,500 euros. I'm like, okay, I'll let them know. There's another one for sale, but I've actually got to send it back. showed you guys this one a while ago. Viewer of the channel sent it to me. And this is a beaut as well. Also limited edition, Venti Venti, the 2020, celebrating 20 years of Paneristi. And this is a beaut. But this one's 45 mil. <laughs> Massive, right? Massive watch, but on this big uh, oaf doesn't look as massive, right? Because look at the look at the forty seven versus the forty five. There are so many forty fives I like and forty twos, but the forty seven is sorry about the focus. The forty seven is so much more me. So this one is it's actually really affordable. I can't remember what he asked for it. It's got like two extra straps and stuff. And the dial and this is this deep, beautiful brown. I mean, I was going to make a video for him and help him sell it. But, you know, things are, it's hard to find the time. See that dial? <sighs> Sandwich dial, just like the one I have on my wrist. Lovely brown. Celebrating 20 years of Panelisti. with the wire lugs, the original. These are 1940 lugs or 1950, whatever they call them. The updated newer lugs. That thing is a piece of sex. <laughs> if you're a bigger bloke, you should be wearing Panerai and shut up. Just stick a Panerai in your wrist and go home. Or an AP or something. Get over it. Daytonas are not for you. <laughs> That's the uh, sad truth. This is nice, but it's a 45. Let me stick it on the wrist. You can stare at my chin for a moment. It, it's really nice, but it's when I, what I look for in Panerai is a massive wrist presence. Now, just don't be fooled, guys. It's just because I'm a fucking Cro-Magnon man. That's all. I'm, I just crawled out of a cave, all right, when I was born. I was just, you know, I was just a bear sleeping in a cave. So it's even a 45 mil watch doesn't look like all of that. But some of you fellas out there are, you know, eight interests, nine interests. And that actually pertains to a subject connected to my big announcement this evening. But I'm going to wait for that. Talk a bit. Theater. Yes? The build-up. The drum roll. <sighs> Ooh, I've not had any booze in a few days. <sighs> Feels kind of good, actually. But I guess that is the point, isn't it? 4.50 in the room. Lighter than normal, but that's okay. I probably pissed a lot of you guys off earlier in the week, which was kind of the whole point. Hey, there's Gmon37 with a 210. I love the 210. I did a video on the 210. Well, I did a video on Panaristi and Panerai in general, but the, the watch featured was the 210. Oof. The back of that watch is beautiful as well. I love the 210. That's real classic, classic stuff. It's like this Panerisi one that's got the wire lugs, which to me is so Panerai because it's like they just took a, a pocket watch, <laughs> stuck it in a case, and then like soldered some lugs on. Just, you know, they stuck it on the wrists of the frogmen. And they're like, go, go plant bombs. On the bottom of ships. 
Oh, you said that was the reason he got the 210. Great. Well, I'm glad, or I'm sorry. What should I say? I always feel apologetic when people say, you're the reason I bought that watch. I'm like, apologize to your wife for me. I don't know what to say. <laughs> uh, Tobster, about the, the protective crown. I love the protective crown because it's iconic. Once you see that, it's that's Panerai, right? But I don't mind the Rolex style crown on these. I don't mind it. You know, I don't need anything else to dig into my wrist. But, you know, maybe I'm just finding reasons to love the watch, which is something everybody is guilty of, you know. Really want that 44 mil submersible Bianco 01226 might be my next watch. Dude, submersibles are sexy. At first, you're like, no, and then you're like, oh, maybe. <laughs> it's like when you start drinking Negronis, your first sip is like, Bruh. and then your second is like, mm. and then your third, you're fucked for the rest of your life. <laughs> You'll never stop drinking them. You're hooked. And that's what Han and I are like. Those submersibles are totally like that. I'm going back into Sam Elliott now. Again. Watch Warrior. You need a Sky Dweller and an Oyster Flex. I'd love a Sky I mean, in the Rolex world, a Sky Dweller would definitely suit me. The Rolexes that suit me the most are, you know, the SD43 and the, hell, even the the James Cameron and all of that, the 44. It's just so fucking hockey puck. That's my issue with that watch. Otherwise, I'd be wearing one every single day. Um, I love my Explorer 2. I love pretty much any sub. A sub is quintessential. It's just. I'm doing. I'm still doing the Ireland video. I know. Get off my back. I've been fucking been on my back the whole week. It's been rough. But I got to the bit where I'm uh, doing the bit. I'm hanging out with with my bro. He, he gave me a surpri surprise visit. He flew in from LA. Jumped on a plane last minute. Crazy fucker. And just walked out the back garden while I was sitting there in the Irish sun. <sighs> One of my best memories of in the recent years, I've got to say. That'll stay with me for a while. And uh, then we all went out west together with my mother. It's beautiful. I can't think of a better way to celebrate me, me 50th. But anyway, um, he we went out drinking, um, just like an afternoon drink in the sun um, up at Hoth Head. And there's a lot of shots of him with his um, steel sub. And it's, I was just looking at the footage going, you know what? That's No one needs any more watch than that. That's everything. A fucking stainless steel sub. You want the date? You don't want the date? Fine. But just that. That's it. That's all you need. It's more than enough for anyone. Iconic. Uh, what other Rolex suits me? I don't know. <clears throat> Daytonas don't. I'm sorry. I love them. I do. But they don't love me back. EHW. Oshin just joined the stream. Did you address the New York Times IDF journalist video upload yet? Okay, I'll do that now. Notice it's taken down. What happened there? Well, it's not real content. Sometimes I put up videos that aren't real content. They're just something I want to show you guys. And though I do a lot of that on Instagram, if you follow me on Instagram, you should follow me on Instagram. The information is under all my videos, not the live ones, but the regular videos. I should start putting all that info into my live videos too. Uh, I express my opinion daily about things on Instagram. It could be anything. It doesn't have to be politics. It could be just, oh, I saw something funny or I enjoyed a movie or or something heartwarming, or a joke, or something like that, you know. It's a good way to daily kind of keep checks on, on your 
the YouTubers that you like. So though some of you are probably rejecting Instagram, I, my advice would be get it. And get it for two reasons, not for your own sake only, but for everyone else's. Because <laughs> if, you, if you're not on there, you might be asking everyone, oh my God, what happened to him? What's going on? And everyone's like, you didn't hear the news? You're like You just become a weight on everyone else's fucking ass. So get on it and get connected. Sorry, this is not you. I'm referring to, referring to a lot of other people who refuse to use Instagram. You don't have to go on Instagram and look at, you know, t- teenage girls jumping around their bedroom. It's full of that shit. But, or maybe you want to go on it for that. I don't know. Uh, anyway, every now and then on uh, YouTube, I post something that I think maybe you guys would like because it's a broader audience. It's a bigger audience over here. I have uh, Damien Broderick is um, a, a no, another Dublin guy on um, social media, and he has millions of followers on Instagram and like 20,000 on YouTube <laughs> because it's really hard to do both. It reminds me of the issue that a lot of people had with uh, TV versus movies. You know, actors used to be big in TV, but could never break into the movie scene. The exceptions to that rule are like George Clooney and so on. He was on ER for years. He was a heartthrob on there. Uh, And he had to make that transition into movies. And it was a tough, it's a rough transition. And uh, the modern version of that exists. And that is when you're huge on TikTok, huge on Instagram, And you can't get a single fucking YouTube follower because, frankly, there are two different platforms seeking two different things. And as my daughter said to me a year ago, I think, at this point, the problem with Instagram people trying to go on YouTube is all of a sudden they have to to say something. And in most cases, they ain't got nothing to say. (laughs) My daughter's already, she's extremely precocious and always has been. She's as cynical as I am, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately. That'll that'll make a great director out of her. It It won't make life easy, but it'll make great movies, hopefully. Not hopefully, most certainly. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, I think she was right. She was like, yeah, a lot of these Instagram girls and stuff, you know, they're real easy. It's real easy to walk along the beach and put your hands through your hair and smile at the camera, and that's content. But then when you have to actually sit and look at the camera and speak, it's game on. Uh, anyway, Damien is hes great. I love the guy. I don't know him at all. We barely ex- exchanged two sentences or whatever on social media but he's cool he's got a lot of cool style i like his style but again tiny on youtube huge on instagram and it seems to be the case like if you're big on youtube it attracts a different kind of person than you know on instagram but i'll tell you this and i'm going to get to the answer of your question sorry i'm rambling this is what i do Well, look at me. I'm rambling again. Oh, shucks. The dude abides. I take comfort in that. Um, (coughs) If you want to kind of keep tabs of me (coughs) daily, Instagram is where to do it. Don't wait all week. Don't wait till Friday to figure out if I'm alive or dead. You'll find out (laughs) sooner if you're on Instagram. (coughs) Anyway. What was I going to say? Oh, yes. So sometimes I put up stuff. You know, the the video um, that I put up earlier in the week was just... I just thought, you know, people need to see this video. They do. 
And all I can do is help spread it. I'm a tiny spoke in a very big wheel. But all I can do is help spread it. I'm like, I need, people need to see this because it's, it's, it affects the Western world, you know. Fucking New York Times, man. Jesus Christ. What are we doing here? And, you know, a lot of people were like, not surprised. A lot of people were like, wow, I didn't know about that. Thanks for sharing. And then there was lots of pushback from a certain crew. Oh, man. And that's fine. And uh, I know I'm ready for it. And lots of people unsubbed. Some There's two types of unsubbers. One is like, well, this is not the point, and your channel isn't about this, which I always get a, a kick out of. <laughs> so I'm like, so what's my channel actually really about? Because if you thought it was watches, you're way off. I was way off. Samsonite, I was way off. What's that from? Um, And then the other guys who just, who are like opposed so they're like fuck him I'm like okay you know but i do this every now and then uh to weed out certain creatures because as you know front dumb and dumber greek force legend right in there look at you right in there uh well done man super fast on that uh <clears throat> As you know, the channel has never been a pursuit of the cash or the follower. I'm, I'm sorry I keep doing this, but my camera is just tonight is, if I blow out that candle, maybe it'll stop doing that. That'll require a lot of, okay. If it, if it continues, if it persists, maybe I should move in front of it a bit more. How about that? There you go. It seems to like this side of the room anyway. Um, and that way you get to see more of this, which is probably more interesting looking than I am. So, uh, what's I saying? Yeah. Anyway, um, the, every now and then you, oh yes, my channel, you know, for some people it's about, you know, build the subs. Get as big a channel as possible. Make as much money as possible. Squeeze as much juice as you can out of every fucking thing you can. <laughs> my channel has never been. I, I, I'll actually go out of my way to fucking lose subs. I'll scuttle the fucking channel if I have to. I don't care. I'm like crazy like that. <laughs> I'm crazy like that. And... I was always suspect about people who earn their living from a channel because I'm, I'm like, okay, that's cool, but are you being genuine? Are you still being genuine? Are you telling us about that watch in a genuine manner, you know? So sometimes I like to um, put up content that I believe in, but I know it's going to be controversial and it will weed out all the fucking characters will come out from under the fucking woodwork. And I'll be like, there you are, you little fuck. <laughs> and I'll just ch -ch, get off my lawn. <laughs> <coughs> and it's not contrarians. It's not people who have a contrary idea. I like to be challenged. It's people who I deem to be just super horrific, you know, you know. There's video footage of this guy on, on the internet who's in, I'm sure you maybe maybe you've seen it. Of this guy, he's in a courtroom and he's up for murder. He's already in jail, but he's up for a new murder. And they're like, did you murder this man? He, and the guy's like, yes, your honor, I did. Would you like to tell us why? And he goes, because he's a child molester and he was my bunkie. And one night he was lying there and he was tell he was trying to justify it. And I was like, just go to sleep. I don't want to hear this. But he kept trying to justify it. 
So I went up there and I choked him to death. <laughs> and he's fucked now. He's got an extra sentence. But he's kind of a hero because people are like, wow, you killed a child molester. Tear. <laughs> like, no one's losing any sleep over that. And it's kind of like that for me. Some Some characters are just so fucking far gone that you're like, okay. You know what? There's one thing that's, you know, if it's an intelligent discussion or it's... But then, then there's certain characters who are just like, okay, found you, you little shit. Grab you by the hair, drag you out the door, boot out the door. And, uh, and that's what I did. I was able to clean some of the trash out because I'm, I'm I would rather how many subs do I have now I don't even fucking know but I'd rather like a hundred thousand subs of open-minded interesting people than a hundred and ten thousand and that ten thousand are a pack of fucking backward fuckers you know People were like, oh, another 5,000 kids in Gaza got obliterated. Oh, that's awful. Let me go to bed, honey. And they sleep like babies, you know. No, I don't want you in the room. Sorry. <laughs> You're a fucking low life. <clears throat> go away. 138, Dave. Really? Is 138? I was about to guess 137 to 136. All right. I actually made a lot of subs, even on Instagram, but they're all like new folks. You know, it's a bit like a Paul Thorpe situation. They're all like, thank you for talking about Palestine. I'm like, yeah, you're welcome. Um, I also like watches. And they're like, okay. <laughs> it's a bit off point, but. This is the problem when you start mixing topics, you know. But, uh, yeah, drain the swamp. That's it, William. Drain the swamp. Murat, evening from Sweden. I might be doing a little episode with a Swedish channel. Is that you, Murat? Maybe it's you. I don't know. I was talking to someone today on email. A uh, Swedish watch channel who are coming to Venice. So I was like, Sure. Why not? Sure. Stephanus Robert Triantafio. I think that's Greek. Hi, Oshin. Can I have your thoughts on the new Breitling Chronomat GMT? Let me pull it up. You know I'm a fan of, of uh, Breitling. I've had a few on... The channel you're talking about the 40 mil one is this the one you're talking about hey listen i like everything brightening do i know they're not the flavor of the day and they haven't been for a while but i like them yeah it's gorgeous is that it but that's a that's a that's not a chrome is that a chroma oh it is a chroma yeah gmt 40 hmm is that the one, man? Thanks for the super chat, by the way. 5.50 in the room, guys. Give me, give me an upvote. Why not? It's, it's, um, it's down there somewhere. Just a thumbs up. Helps the whole thing. I don't know how. I don't understand how it works, but... Listen, Brightling's beautiful, man. Yes. If you're interested in doing it, I'll tell you one thing, though. With the market that's out there, try and get a discount. Try to do that. Greetings from Switzerland. Chilling barefoot. <laughs> I like that handle. <clears throat> Mark Wild. Paul Thorpe is the next George Galloway. He'll be licking milk from a saucer. I like George Galloway. I don't. I think George Galloway is an intellectual. I don't think Paul is. Paul appeals to a very different crowd. <laughs> and good luck to him. As I said before, best of British luck. Off you go. 
go do your thing. At this point, I don't think there's any point in speaking about the man anymore. He's out of the watch game as far as I can see. And if he tries to get back into it, Jesus Christ, that's fucking not going to be fun. He's gone straight into the... This country's gone to shit. Get those immigrants out of here. You know, all of that. They're giving the they're giving the houses to the immigrants. <laughs> oh, that stuff. Jesus Christ. I was supposed to mention that as well. I, I put it in my uh, main topic. And I'll talk about that. And then I'll give you this big news, this big announcement. So I saw this video um, online of people protesting immigrants. Get them out, get them out, was the chant. Now, I'm not sure if it was get them out, the immigrants, or get the people, the politicians who allowed the immigrants in, get them out of office. It could have been a bit of both. Get them out, get them out. And the video was, to my eternal shame, right in front of the Customs House in Dublin. Ireland, where I just was a few months ago, more than a few months ago at this point, fuck, back in September, October. I immediately went into the chat and it was full of, yeah, we stand Ireland for the Irish. I'm like, am I seeing this? Is this really happening? So anyway, Ireland, just to be very brief about it, Ireland has accepted in a lot of refugees and a lot of immigrants and so on in the recent years. And of course, with the various <clears throat> struggles around the world, Ukraine, Syria, et cetera, et cetera, uh, there's been a lot of an influx. And some people aren't too happy about that. And though I understand it more, like in Britain, you know, the Paul's Harp and his gang, you know, um, I don't accept it in my country. Like, I, I don't, I'm, I'm sorry, but I have to reject it. I mean, how, how short is your fucking memory, guys? We left the country. We ran away. I don't, I'm not talking about during the potato famine, certainly back then. When I left Ireland, first of all, I left the country. So I'm one of them. But when I was leaving Ireland, you know, back in the 90s, emigration was the problem in Ireland. People were getting their degree or whatever in college. Free college, by the way, social democracy. Fucking yeah. Third le level education, some of the finest in the world. Trinity College, Dublin, where Samuel Beckett and Oscar Wilde attended. Don't forget it, kids. Um, and then heading off. Because why? Because there was no industry in Ireland. There was no wealth. We were a poor country. We were still picking up the pieces from occupation of 700 years. That we finally got our country back. There wasn't even a, a currency. 1922. We had no currency. We finally got our country back, or most of it, not all of it. That's a whole other discussion. Uh, you don't want to talk about eight, about that to Eamon de Valera, right? But anyway, we got most of it back. We didn't even have, have a currency in Dublin, in the Central Bank on Dame Street, right opposite Trinity College, actually. You can see the first Irish pound. It's a big page like this with signatures. That's the first Irish pound, because we didn't have a pound. We called it the punt at the time. We had no currency. Anyway, um, <clears throat> emigration was the issue. People would just leave. There was no workforce. People get law degrees and medical degrees and so on. And then fucking off to America or the United Kingdom or elsewhere. Leaving. And what happened? What happened when an Irish man lands in the, in 
in America. What happened to me? And I didn't have any fucking law degree or, or medical degree. Open arms. Yeah? Open arms. Give me your poor and your weak and your hungry or whatever the, the line is under the Statue of Liberty. Open arms. I mean, you have to get a visa. You have to get a work visa. You've got to do it. <clears throat> but a lot of people didn't. I had a hairdresser. She was lovely. I'm not going to say her real name. I'll say Lisa. Okay. And she lived in, she was in Queens. And I used to go get my hair cut. And she was from Cork. And she was so sweet. This is in Long Island City, New York. And we'd go there and we'd have a chat. And I was one of the only Irish people she knew. And I used to go in and all the other hairdresser girls, it was fun for them because, you know, back then I was pretty. It was before I discovered scotch. And uh, so the, the ladies would be like, oh, he's coming in. So I'd sit down and, you know, but I'd go in just for the chats with Lisa because they were so fun. And she had she had a boyfriend there in, in the States, basketball player guy. So she'd be asking me, like, what do you think? Do you think, like, I'm right? Like, I'd like to go out on a Tuesday or whatever. And he doesn't want to go out on a Tuesday. I'm like, ah, well, you know, maybe he's tired. You know, we 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 were like old women talking. But I discovered that they'd never go on holiday. And I'm like, well, why don't you just jump on a plane and, oh, well, you know, I overstayed my visa, you know. Because you get 90 days, you know, there's a visa waiver there in the U.S. for the Irish and for many others. 90 days. But she overstayed. It's not, not a smart thing to do, but a lot of people do it. A lot of people find a life over there and then they don't know what to do and they get scared then. And then they're walking around and they they don't know what to do. And one of the great ways to get around it is to get married. <laughs> get married and then put in your paperwork and then maybe Homeland Security will say, okay, well, you were illegal here for 10 years, but now you're married to an American citizen. So, okay, you know. So I was telling, saying to her, why don't you just marry him? You know, you guys are together for years. You live together. Just get fucking married and get on with it. But um, the truth is a lot of great people move into different countries illegally. They just, that was their only way in or whatever. And it doesn't mean they're bad people. They just need a helping hand. They could be fucking genius for all you know. You know what I mean? Like, I was never illegal. I always had a, um, a visa. But, um, you know, I got I got the 01. I got the 01 visa. Look it up, guys. Tell me what it says. This scruffy fucking knacker got a fucking 01. And with the 01, basically, the reason why they give it to you is they'd rather have you in their country than not. I mean, they give the O1 to fucking scientists and shit, and savants and chess players and shit. Because they're like, oh, fuck, this dude walked onto our soil. You know, we want him. We'd rather have him here. Figure it out, because he, you know, that's what that shit is. Anyway, coming back to Ireland. To me, it's just, I got to say, so I go into the chats and, you know, I'm like fucking going out after everyone going, guys, what he is talking about. What the fuck? Where are you coming up with this bollocks? This is not what the Irish do. I'm sorry, but no. Don't you remember the signs? No dogs, no Irish. That was a sign. Not recent and not in recent history, but going back in England in the United States, you've all seen Gangs of New York. Bill the Butcher didn't like the Irish. He'd go down to the harbor, to the ports, and watch all the immigrants come in. He'd stand there with his hands on his shoulders and 
the big top hat. It's, it was fucking wild. And thank God the open arms of many people around the world embraced. Now, Ireland, all these years later, is rich. Man, it's one of the richest countries in the world. I didn't know. I figured it out. I figured it out when I was back there in Ireland. I was like, I know it's prosperous, but are these figures for, for real? And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, you didn't know. We're one of the richest in the world. It's I think it's the richest country in Europe. Holy shit. Look at you, Ireland, all grown up, tits and all. What the fuck happened? Now, with that wealth and prosperity comes complications. And one of those complications is housing and being able to afford to live in a rich country all of a sudden. But another one is all of a sudden, instead of your population leaving to go elsewhere, everyone wants to come to you. So be careful what you wish for. Anybody out there living in a relatively poor country? Count your blessings. Because <laughs> the second that you get rich, it's like turning on a light in the middle of the forest at night. Moths. <laughs> you're you're going to have every flying object, every creature coming toward you. That's not to be demeaning, by the way. I'm just... it's imagery thing optics thing everyone wants to fly toward the light what do you think happened with america america was very very wealthy and everyone ran toward the light this is what people do they're not interested in some country that's floating with its nose above water they want to come for the work for the money the work the industry and in some cases they're running from a war-torn country what the fuck were the irish doing when we ran out of there <sighs> the way i look at it is guys you got to pay it forward now there's 30 plus million irish emigrants not immigrants but emigrants people who moved out around the world now australia new zealand United States, Canada, all around Europe, everywhere in Europe, the Far East. <clears throat> Should those countries kick those people out? <laughs> Send them all back to Ireland? 30 million Irish come home? That's not going to be fun. So, I know it's difficult. And I know there are complications. You know, one of the classic scenes, because I, I did some digging on it. I am, after all, doing the Ireland video. And I, <clears throat> I have a, a lunch with Dave Moore from Irish Radio there, who happens to be one of my best friends. But he's also one of the biggest voices on radio, Irish Radio there. We spoke about that. Most of the stuff we talked about was all fun stuff, reminiscing about old days and all that. He came with us to America years ago, but uh, we did get serious at one point, and that'll probably be the part that I use in the video about uh, about how Dublin and Ireland is not changing but evolving. It's still fucking Dublin. It's still the same Dublin. But it's just got a shiny coat on now and a fucking Rolex. It's expensive. It's sophisticated. It's very multicultural. It's like a mini London. And, uh, but I, I did the, the deep delve on it. And, you know, there's plenty of videos out there and people open arms and all that. And they're saying things like, oh, these men are coming to our little town and they're just, they have nothing to do. They have no work, so they stand around on the street corner. It's very intimidating. And I'm like, well, yeah, they got nothing to do. 
first of all, they don't speak the language. They look different. Everyone to them looks very different. They're in a completely new environment and totally new culture. They don't know how to integrate, and you don't like them very much. <laughs> you know, off the bat, you kind of look, you give them weird looks on the street. So clearly they feel out of, out of place, you know. There's a town where I started the channel here, Vicenza. You guys know it well, if you know the channel well. And um, it's inland quite a bit. And it's kind of getting overrun now. There's a lot of immigrants. Italy has been grappling with this problem now for a long time. This predates the Irish issue and certainly the English one by probably 10 years because Italy juts down into the Mediterranean physically and, you know, geographically, I mean, and it's easy to get to on a boat, easier to get to on a dinghy or whatever coming from, you know, Africa or other places. And, of course, if you go to that town of Vicenza, you'll hear a lot of that chat, you know, all oh, these N-words at the train station all hanging around all these men you know and i have to say every now and then i do go over to vicenza because <clears throat> my um my daughter grew up there and that's uh, how i know vicenza her, her mom is from there and i still have some friends there and i go back every once in a while I'll take the train over and i get off the train station and it's you know it's <laughs> It's the Ivory Coast. Like, I, it doesn't look like Italy. It's like, it's around, especially around train stations. For some reason, train stations are always like <laughs> the most dangerous part of any city, the train station. Penn Station in New York. Like, fuck me. If you've got a Rolex on, roll, roll your sleeve down, you know, Penn Station. Because that's just, I don't know what it is about train stations. It just attracts it's probably because they're 24 hour locations or something in them. So I get off there and I'm quite often I text my daughter. I'm like, holy shit, I just got off the train here and it's it's basically Kenya, you know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know. And she's like, Don't fucking say anything, Dad, you old fucking boomer. And I'm like, no, no, I didn't say anything. I'm just like, this is kind of crazy, you know. I remember when Vicenza was a good, clean, white town, you know. Not. Anyway. So uh, when I was back in Vicenza, where I started the channel, you guys saw all those videos when I, you know, walked around doing the COVID thing and all that. Um, I was going to the train station one time, and I was aware of that, you know. And all the fucking fascists there are always like, yeah, you know, we don't like them. And those fucking assholes. <laughs> Every time I see more black people at the train station with a chance, I'm like, fucking yes. Because I know it's going to piss off those Nazis. <laughs> that, that was because, you know, the, the way you drive around with chance of the way the road system works, you're probably anywhere you're going to go. You're probably you're going to have to go through the loop system and go by the train station just to get to the because they have a circular system there so I, all I can think of is some of these characters were fucking monsters I'm like I hope that irritates you every fucking day you know it's like a victory for me anyway um, side note so uh, I was walking over there I was going toward the train station and I thought, you know what? You have a ten thousand dollar watch in your wrist. I think I had the the espresso, the black black uh, GMT ten twelve thousand whatever it costs or cost at the time. And I was walking along, and you know, lads hanging around on the corner and chatting. You know, and I thought, yeah. Well, I mean, I grew up in the streets of Dublin. I'll be all right, you know. <laughs> It's not looking, it wouldn't be the first time, right? But I'm walking along. The next thing I get a tap on the shoulder. And the world slows down. You know, I'm like, what the fuck? And I have my headphones on listening to music, which is not a good idea, by the way. If 
you're, if you want to be more aware of your surroundings, don't fucking listen to music and the headphones, right? But I'm walking along with headphones, and next thing I'm like, I turn around, and it's one of the dudes, right? He's black as night. He's one of the chaps that were I just passed from the group I just passed, looking very dodgy. Uh, this is 100% true. I'm not inventing this shit, by the way. And I, I just kind of went, oh, fuck. And I took out my headphones. I'm like, oh, you know, I, because of my own, you know, what prejudice, probably paranoia, whatever. I just kind of bolt up. Like, what the fuck? The cat's avoid. And the guy goes like, like this and he holds up the thing in front of me. It's my passport. My passport had fallen out of my coat 50 feet back. He picked it up and he ran over to me with my passport. And I went, oh, 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 grazie. He goes, okay, and he runs back. And I, I, I put it in my, my coat again and I was like, O'Malley, you're a dick. <laughs> you're a fucking dickhead. Because what you think, you they wanted your watch? He picked up your goddamn passport. He saved you a lot. If I lost my passport, that would not be fun for me. <laughs> I'd, I'm an expat. I live outside my home country. I think the nearest embassy is in Rome or somewhere. It's just a lesson. Could have been the other way. Could have been a punch in the face, robs my watch. Then I'd be telling a different story and I'd be all grumpy. And, and Trump, you know, I'm glad I have the other story to tell. Last time I was attacked and beat up in Vicenza was by a Vicentino. By a guy who believes in smaller government, the right to bear arms, tighter borders, less immigration, less asylum for immigrants. Um, what else? Uh, traditional family values. He got offended I wouldn't take a drink from him. Because he's a bit of a cunt. <laughs> and I, I, I didn't want to drink. I went over to a party and wanted to say hello to a few friends who were there. And he got offended. And he fucking went at me. The guy's six foot six and weighs about 400 pounds. Fucking nearly broke my neck and broke my nose. That's who I got attacked by in Vicenza. Not by the black guys at the train station. It always makes me laugh. You know, United States, most attacks are by from white men in the country. But apparently ISIS is the problem, right? Right. Got it. It's time for people to get over that shit. Now, coming back to Ireland, because Ireland is close to my heart. Fellas, stop losing the fucking plot. It's not easy to take others in. It never was. There are complications. But the answer isn't get them out. And the answer isn't going after the politicians who set up these rules for asylum. You either let people in or you don't. Somebody wrote in, the, in that chat there with, on that video I mentioned. Some woman, I think her name was... I think her name was Karen, actually. Uh, she wrote, you know, good good for the Irish. <clears throat> the first people to ever speak up about what they want. And I replied to her and I said, no, no, not quite. Nazi Germany, they did it first. That comment was then deleted. So I reposted it. It's not fun. It's not easy. But you got to just deal with it. 
and get past it and don't use it as some sort of scapegoat for the problems you have in your own country. You know who the real enemy is? If you're in Ireland, in Dublin, your real enemy are the big guys who own the fucking apartment buildings who are running up the rents real high. They're the fellas with the money and they're Irish and British who own half the fucking real estate there and they're running up the rent prices sky high. They're, the, they're your enemy. Don't be bickering with the people down on the ground because we're all in the same basket. There's a, there's a great uh, experiment that was done years ago where they take black ants and red ants and they put a bunch of them together in a jar. And black ants don't know red ants. The two of them, they crawl over each other. They're trying to figure each other out. They don't know. But if you take that jar and you shake it vigorously for a second and then you put it back down, within a minute, the black and the red ants, they start attacking each other. The question isn't who, which ant is the evil one, because there isn't. The question is who shook the jar? And that's what the Irish are missing now, and that lets me down because the Irish should know better than to think all of this bullshit. <clears throat> you're supposed to embrace your, your neighbors and people coming in, you're supposed to help them out. Anybody Irish watching and you say there's a bunch of lads standing around on the street, go up to them, say, hey, welcome to the neighborhood. Do you speak English? You know, it might be daunting at first, but imagine you landed in their country because your country was going to shit and their country was prosperous. Wouldn't it be nice if somebody walked up and went, hey, welcome to the neighborhood, you know, that might at least nurture some sort of stuff. You have to remember, guys, attacks, vicious attacks and aggression, they don't come from immigrants. They come, or even within the country, from any one type of people. They come from the poor. The poor will always get up to no good. The poor will get into trouble. They will commit crime. It's not, it's nothing to do with black and white and green and yellow, whatever fucking person you are. It's rich versus poor. The poor will always create shit. Rich people never get up to anything <laughs> unless they're in some weird mob or, you know, Jeffrey Epstein or something like that. Rich people are quiet. They don't make a sound because they don't want to make any waves because they have all that money. You know, they don't want to make any noise in the room. Rich people are very, very quiet. You know, they come to the theater, they watch the movie or the play, they get back into their beautiful car, they drive home with that low home of that expensive car they have. That's the rich. The poor scream and yell and rob and break windows because they're suffering. It's nothing to do, it's especially in America, nothing to do with black. It's that most or a very, very large percentage of blacks in America are under the poverty line. And people under the poverty line do stupid shit and they rob your car and they, you know, rob your watch. No matter what fucking color your skin is. <clears throat> Going off now, aren't I? Fucking, this is getting me. It's getting me as well, especially seeing Ireland. Now, I reached out to some people, some important people in, in Ireland to say, listen, what the fuck is going on? Like, and they're like, listen, it's a very small amount of people doing that shit. And they're being whispered to by certain people on social media going, the immigrants have struck again, attacking a lady on the street, just a regular Irish woman going to work. These immigrants come into our country. They don't want to work. They want free handouts. <laughs> All of this stuff. If you ever find yourself saying any of that, 
Just do me a favor and stick a fucking pencil on the table and lower your head down on it. Just do us all a fucking favor. You're a waste of space. Don't you know how immigration and emigration works? We are not a species that stays put. We move around the world. That's what we do. Like every other, other fucking animal, and most other animals. The weather changes. You look over your head and you see birds flying in a V shape. What do you think they're doing? They're going elsewhere. <laughs> It's a survival technique. It's what we all do. Anybody sitting in the United States right now, unless your name is Sitting Bull or something, I don't know, uh, Native American, which I highly doubt there's anybody watching without those kind of names. That's what you did or your father or grandfather or great-grandfather did. You emigrated to survive. I don't know. So uh, it's <clears throat> something that, uh, yeah, noise the shit out of me. You know, people have to see beyond. There will always be those small cases of, yeah, some guy lost his reason and fucking attacked someone on the street. It wouldn't be the first time in Dublin. <laughs> I grew up being attacked. That was a, like a given. You know, I'd go to school in Dublin in the 80s and going, okay, I wonder will I come home with a bl black eye today? And that wasn't immigrants. That was just the fucking Irish shitheads. We're all beating each other up day after day. <sighs> And usually crime in Dublin went back when it was fucking whites, only whites. It was just the poor. It was mostly the poor. Because they're desperate or they've got nothing else to do or whatever. Same stuff. <clears throat> Topster, let me let me take Topster for example. <clears throat> I mean, you're you're very you're on safe ground with Dirk, but you're not on particularly safe ground with me. <clears throat> but I'll read it. I watched a Muslim migrant, quote unquote. Why is that in quotes? Video where he extremely violently curb stomped a girl in a short skirt, extremely violent. Then after she lay on the, in the gutter dying, he pulled down her skirt. Diversity. Well, I've watched videos of white people doing that. I've watched people who aren't migrants do that. Jeffrey Dahmer was not a migrant. Jeffrey Dahmer was a white American. He lured men, young, pretty men, into his apartment and gutted, drugged them and gutted them and put their heads in his fridge and ate other parts. Touche. Okay, come back with another one. Because we can go on all night, motherfucker. All night. You can run that shit with Dirk all you want because Dirk is non-confrontational. But I, I won't stand for it. <clears throat> I'm sure you watch plenty of fucking videos. Showing you all sorts of horribleness. For every one you show me, I'll show you another two. Where they're not migrants and they're not necessarily of a different color. <clears throat> Try me. It's fucking ignorance. Oh, man. Don't get all riled up, Hush. Jesus. It's because I can't have a smoke. That's my problem. God damn it. I knew it was for some reason. <laughs> Anyway, Irish, the lads. Um, don't do it. There's another thing as well that has to be admitted. Uh, migration quite often improves a country. I think of the strength of the United States made up of all these different cultures. It's a beautiful thing. Think of, you know, I went up to a bunch... They're in the video, actually. I don't know if I'll put it in the cut, but 
I go to a bunch outside the pub and it's like a shorter dude with darker skin and this taller girl. And it's all these different, it's a mix. I was like, hey guys, you know, cause I'm talking to everybody. And uh, one guy is like, I'm from Brazil. And she's like, I'm from Slovenia. And, and they're all and Irish as well. They're all having a pint. And I was like, you know what? I, I love the fact that there's like 90,000 Brazilians in Ireland now. Maybe someday we'll be good at soccer, you know, and they all laughed. But this, I'm also serious about that, you know. This is how you make beautiful people, mixing stuff up. Genetics works that way. You mix the cards, you, you know, it's shuffling the cards, you know. Maybe the... Uh, the, slow, uh, the, the Scandinavians, for example, they can bring us some of their beautiful little pretty noses. <laughs> and the Brazilians can bring some sallow skin so the Irish can finally get a tan without fucking getting a stroke. <laughs> the Irish tan like a, a tea bag. Like we're not good tanner. I am. I don't know why. There's some fucking Turk in me. I don't know. I'll tan like crazy. The Irish won't tan. They freckle and then they fall over in a red mess. You know, Irish guy marries an, a Brazilian girl or whatever. One of those mixes. Kids, all of a sudden, they can go on the beach and not have to worry about getting fucking skin cancer. Tell me that's not an improvement. <clears throat> but the simple fact is we don't live in a world where everyone stays put and everything stops. We like our country the way it is. Like, let me tell you something. The, the Polish leader, whatever, the leader of Poland, whatever his fucking name is, recently, he made a video going, you know, these are the statistics. Poland took in no immigrants. And look at our economy and look at our crime rate. It's the lowest in Europe. Our economy is strong. We said, no, we didn't take in one immigrant during Syria, Ukraine, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> now, probably with Palestine, maybe, if they can get the fuck out of there, which they can't. God help them. And <clears throat> so he goes up with this big bravado, and there's a lot of videos around the internet going, this is the best fucking speech on the internet, because look, look how it works. And I know for sure, I haven't speak, spoken to these guys in ages, but I know those fucking Nazis back in, in Vicenza probably are like, yeah, he's fucking right, you know. That's my guess. In Poland, they took no immigrants in. Now their economy is strong. Now, no, you know, very little crime or at least external incentivized crime or whatever you would call it. And all I could think of was like, uh, yeah, you're a shitbag. That's all you are. Uh, it's like it's like a dude going out with all his mates and going, you know, at the end of the night, they're walking up Grafton Street in Dublin and there's a busker and there's a homeless guy and the mates are like handing them a few bucks. Oh, he's a good busker. Oh, the homeless guy needs a quid or two. There you go. And then you go in and you buy pints and then you get to the top of Grafton Street and one guy goes, you know what? I didn't give any money to any of those buskers or to the homeless. And I didn't buy anyone any pints. I've got the most money. Why is that something to boast about? <laughs> yeah, you do have the most money because you didn't fucking spend. You stingy shit. <laughs> yeah, you, you did great all night not helping others. And now, yes, you are the richest out of all of us. But you're going to hell, you lump of shit. Of course you've got more money and than the rest of us because you didn't help. You didn't do anything. It's nothing to tout. So Poland think it's like it's a big, oh, we should be proud of. Uh, yeah, of course your borders are more secure. And of course you, your economy is doing great. Because you didn't fucking help anybody. That's the, how it works. Because helping others requires giving. Do you ever see The Green Mile, that film with Tom Hanks and that big fella, big black guy who's in one of the cells and he helps 
you know, he revives the little rodent and then he helps like take a, some sickness out of one of the other guys. And then it's all these flies that come out of his mouth. It's like a crazy movie. Each time he saves someone else, it takes a toll on him. That's what it is. You want to be super greedy and just keep everything for yourself and just go, it's mine. Yeah, you'll do great. And you'll always have loads of money. Okay, good for you. Some of us don't like that as much. Don't come have a drink with me at the bar. I don't want to fucking know you. You know? Anyway. So I'm going to get I'm going to do this big announcement now after I've ostracized everyone. <laughs> now. Hey, hopefully whoever is remaining in my crowd is a half decent person with a half conscience. You know, I understand these things are difficult to grapple with. They have to be embraced. They have to be dealt with. And they might be messy. You know, you want to cook a beautiful meal in a kitchen. And once you do, you turn around and look at your kitchen and it's a big mess. You know, a lot of these things take effort. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be clean. But what do you want to do? You want to be a nice civilized country who remember that they relied on asylum on the immigration even legal even legal immigration for fucking centuries you're gonna forget that in an instant good for you there aren't many in ireland who have never opened a book we're a very learned people we're very educated people free education even third level education in ireland but they do exist and some of them we're in that fucking rally that day going, get them out, get them out. Shame. That's all I can say. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> I speak a lot more when I don't have fucking smoke in my hand. If I smoke, my throat is done. Rufus was so funny understanding uh, you're probably going back there. You're probably referring to something else. I'm so sorry. I get on a rant, guys. You know how it is. You want to send some super chats? Send them over to Dirk in uh, 40 minutes. SK Productions, 199. Oh, Sheen! <laughs> I like your little avatar there. Is that Scooby-Doo? <laughs> That's cool. Ryan Kerr, 499. Oshin, you're the only of the watch reviewers I've seen with a large wrist. Thank you for representing all the big wristed fellas. I'm glad you brought that up because that pertains to what I'm about to tell you guys, which is a big reveal. Now, I'm doing a soft reveal in the sense, apparently this is how you do these things. I, I didn't know. But when you're releasing a product, you're supposed to do a soft release ahead of time, especially for uh, loyal fans and so on. So that's what I'm doing tonight. So only you guys watching will, you guys will get ahead of everyone else. And it, it's something to do. I mean, at least it aligns with Ryan's statement there. Yeah, I know a lot of the lads, Adrian Barker has like six and a half inch wrist or six inch wrist or something quite small. And a lot of the fellas have small wrists. Um, watch crunch and you're terrific and all these lads. Slender, slender wrists. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a beefy fella. There's plenty of us beefy fellas out there. <clears throat> Born to lose 13, Trump 2024. I think, yeah, I think Trump will win. I mean, that's, that's the feeling I'm getting. I think he will. Biden can go fucking suck my dick at this point. Motherfucker. With his ice cream in his hand the other day. You see that? Answering a question about, you know, when will the killing of children end? And he has an ice cream. So hand the ice cream to a fucking security guy for one second, you moron. Stupid fucking idiot. 17 billion in aid. Give me a break. So, yes, I think Trump is going to win. 
Biden lost anyone he had. He lost them in the past couple of months since October 7th. Gone. They're fucking gone. He's a fucking monster. Stephanus, uh, can I have your thoughts on the brightening? Yes, we saw that. Um, Michaela earlier was saying, breathing new life into Panerai looks, yeah, because you know how it is, Michaela, you know, this shit looks good on me. You know, the funny thing is I was wearing it with the, um, one of my coats, the, the canali one that's kind of camel and the hands and the indices on the dial were like all matching up with the <laughs> fucking coat. It was, it was nuts. Thanks, Michaela. Hope you're well. I'll see you on Monday. With any luck. Ali is in the house, coming in hard. Always a legend. Good evening, all. Very important discussion today. A topic that needs to be addressed. A simple way to take measure of a country is to look how many want in and how many how many want out. You are so right. Think of all the people going to Dubai right now. Racing over to Dubai. Ali, I'm going to leave that up there for a bit because... You're the man of the evening. Thank you so much. Legend. Can't thank you enough. You might be interested in my little announcement here. Although you actually know all about it already. Um, so, guys. Uh, I wanted to tell you. Let me get a drink. I'm not drinking much tonight, but... God, I'm so tempted to have a fucking cigar. Shit. Oh, don't do it. Don't do it. Antibiotics in the system. Um, so here's the announcement, right? So let me build this up the right way. So you know my 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 buddy Frollo Simone. Let me pull up the video where I feature him. He's like my best friend here. And he has a watch store. I mean, that's how we got to know each other, in fairness. But we became great friends outside it. For some reason, we just hit it off. I don't know what it is. He's just, he's a solid dude. And we we talk a lot. And he kind of looks out for me as well. And um, I'll never forget that Nico shit hit the airwaves. And he picked up on it because... You know, he's in those WhatsApp groups, or one of them, one of them, where that shit was spread. And he, he didn't even, he reached out to me. He said, hey, can you come meet me? Meet me outside the church. <laughs> you know, I had to go meet him. It was like a, a crazy uh, little um, secret meetup, <laughs> CIA thing or something. He just wanted to inform me that he saw my face come up on these groups and stuff. I, of course, was absolutely devastated and embarrassed and i tried to explain that there's a fucking monster out there as a psychopath and spreads this kind of shite and he's like do you really owe forty-two thousand to this person i'm like no it's nine and i'm getting them paid off and he tried to fucking rip me off in the first place blah 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 but he goes like i just wanted to let you know and i've got your back and whatever you need He's just like the sweetest person on earth. So, um, and a great friend. And, and, you know, I know his whole family. I pet their dog on the street. And sometimes I walk their dog. And um, where the fuck is this video I'm looking for now? Oh, it's, I think it's in this one. And um, last year he was saying, I'm going to make a watch. I was like, really? Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Here we go. This is him. Thank you, Ali. You're the man. Legend. Love you. I said, oh, yeah, that's a nice idea. You know, I have an issue with these Venezianico guys that are using Venice as their... As their... Um, symbolism or whatever the fuck they're doing for their watches because those venezianico guys they ain't got nothing to do with venice they live like fucking 30 miles north of venice 
And their watches kind of have no connection really with the islands, the old city of Venice in any way. They're kind of just piggybacking off. They're riding the coattails of the whole idea of Venice. There's no design cues. I mean, they have the cross thing. Okay. They're really leaning into that kind of thing. Redentore and, and Naive and stuff. And I'm like, where is the ordinary? The, where is the, you know, where's the connection to Venice? I don't quite get it. So he was, he wanted to make a watch. Let me pull him up here. This, just to give you anybody who doesn't know, you've probably seen him before on the channel. Uh, here he is in his little store. Um, and he's got four generations since 1910. These guys are a watch, uh, a jewelry store, and he's a you know a watch seller. There he is, <laughs> doing this thing. I gave him that loop. That's the Omega loop. He has. I gave him that. And uh, <clears throat> they go back. You know, it's a family thing. Extremely well, uh, well reputed, incredible reputation. Whenever banks are uh, looking for valuations and so on for old stuff that are in safety deposit boxes and people who passed away and stuff, because a lot of old money here in Venice, you know, they call him. He has to go over and do evaluations. It takes him days. And uh, he's just a fucking legend, this guy. There's their their brush. Now there's there's the dad. I never got to meet the dad. That's uh, Luciano Farallo. Their original store was actually on the Rialto Bridge, right on the bridge, most famous one of the most famous bridges in the world, the Rialto, the bridge everybody wants to see here in Venice. That's where the store. In fact, it's still there, but nobody's rented it again. But the sign is still there. But they moved they moved about two hundred meters in towards San Marco. That's where the story is now. There's his grandfather. Okay. All jewelers, all watch sellers. There's Simone and his brothers as a child. This is beautiful Venice history. This is a family connected truly to Venice. And a sweet, sweet family. You want to see his children. They're all beautiful. Uh, gorgeous Venetian kids. Uh, it's such a healthy family. They're very, they're quite Catholic. You know, he does mass every week and stuff. I don't go, but you know, I don't judge him for. This is me waiting. This is our scene. And whenever I go to see him, I wait and as he closes the store, and then we go for a drink together. On this video, we go, uh, we go to dinner. We went over to uh, one of the hotels there. He knows everyone. Like when you're walking down the street with Simone, everyone waves and everyone says hello. Oh, yeah, this is the IWC video. This is nice. We had a beautiful fish meal and chats. A good, solid lad. Some people say we look like brothers. Maybe. But anyway, um, I fucking trust this guy with anything. Like, if I needed to leave my whole watch collection with someone, I would leave it with him in a heartbeat, without a shadow of doubt. This is this is a true brother who you know is going to do you right and take care of you. Like this, you know, is good, big heart. Anyway, let me get to the point. Fucking building it up too much here. Too much drama, O'Malley. So let me pull up a new video that no one has seen yet. <clears throat> it's not even listed, so I have to go into my private stuff. So he wanted to make a little watch. And I said, oh, that's cute. And he, he spoke about it. This has been going on for now a year. And he came up with this design. He wanted something connected with Venice. I was like, are you going to go all out? Are you going to go high horology? And he was like, no, I want to keep, it's just something cheap, something simple. Somebody maybe who comes through Venice wants a memoir, maybe wants a little watch. I'll make a little quartz thing. No, no big deal or anything. 
Um, believe you me, if you want to watch Snob, he's the man, like, for sure. But uh, he's like, no, I'm not going to get heaven and pretend like I'm some great watchmaker. But I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to make something maybe interesting. And um, <clears throat> and he showed me this design. And I thought, oh, well, that's cute. You know, it's it's nice. And that's his little thing, Frollo since 1910. Now, that is the Le Leon, the, Le the lion. And that's the famous flag. Real, real simple. And I said to him, I was like, you know, why don't we do something a little cooler than that? This is a smallish watch. It's quartz and it's cheap. It's, you know, he finally got them in the other day. There's one in blue because there's a Venetian blue and the Venetian red, which is more of like a vermilion. Okay. And I was like, well, you know, I have an audience and, you know, they follow me and they know they love Venice and so on. And they're probably looking a lot, a lot of them buy Venezianico watches for the connection with Venice. But that's, those guys have fucking nothing to do with Venice, really. I was like, why don't you make something kind of cool and something my audience could be interested in? And then we spoke about what that could possibly be. And I said, well, you chose the lion. <laughs> What's the other symbol in Venice that we could use and make a real fucking watch for, for men, for real wrists, something that's not just cheap, you know, okay, you know, affordable, but a decent size watch and a decent build watch and something with more of a... Um, something a bit more serious and something pertaining to Venice and everything that is Venice. And what we came up with, ladies and gentlemen, drum roll, full screen, uh, full screen is, ooh, here we go. Here it is. And I put some fucking background, Venice background in. But um, presenting the Venice Ferro di Prua. What you're seeing on that dial is the Ferro di Prua, which is the icon of Venice because it's on the front of all of the gondolas. It's a very important part of Venice. You'll see lots more. Be patient. There she is. That is a watch that has a connection with the Frollo family since 1910, as you can see. A little applied logo. That one's on the leather. It comes on rubber and on a bracelet. We just got in these in the other day, just before I got sick, just on Friday. I actually filmed this stuff on the first day that I was sick. <clears throat> and what you're seeing is the Ferro di Prua, which is on the dial, and that represents Venice. And I'm going to go into what it really means. It's not just something fancy that looks weird. And odd and shiny on the front of a of a gondola it actually represents something important and this is the watch again it's not high horology it's an SW, uh, sw200 movement in there same thing as you get in the zero west watches and so on good work ho workhorse uh, swiss movement 316l steel 44 mil case 14 mils deep. Now, check out that shot, guys. There, you've got the ferro going through. The real ferro, the prua, passing through. There's a money shot for you right there. Um, 51 mil lug. It's a, de a decent-sized watch for a decent-sized wrist. And simple as hell. And I'm going to go into why we did that. Kept it kind of brushed and super extra simple on the case. 
just big fat indices, great loom on it, and so on. And we did it in the vermilion red, the blue that you saw earlier, and we did a Tiffany as well. <laughs> I was against the idea, but it actually turned out really good. So he was right. Um, I'll show you the Tiffany in a minute. There's the blue, and there's the Fed going through. Look, I'll make a video. There's a video coming out soon, like we're a proper enunciation, but um, just letting you guys know first. Nice, right? Let me go. As you guys watch that, I'll bring up Ferro di Prua, what it means. Zoom in on that. Where are you guys in the video? Sorry, I'm just trying to pull up Federally Pru here on a website that won't bombard me with nonsense all over the place. <clears throat> so um, let me explain what this really is. Let me pause that for a moment. Whether you know this or not, you see it on the front of every gondola. Oh my God, go away, chat. Happy chat, whatever. Oh my God, this website is horrific. You guys are the worst. Uh, let me pull up. I'll do it this way again. So, this is what the Fedo is what it stands for so this shape is the canal is the canal grande oh my god this is gonna kill me can i get rid of that i can go away bye and sorry about that big orange thing in the way i just it's the best one i could find um so this is the canal grande going up the side, this is the shape of the canal, roughly, okay? And then you have the Bacino di San Marco, this is the, the shape there of the Bacino di San, or the Ponte di Rialto, so that's the, the Rialto uh, bridge, that's the Ponte, right there. Then all these little sticks, these pointers going out, these blades, the go out from that, they represent the different sestiere. The sestiere is a, um, a, an area like, a, what would you call it? Uh, the different hoods. <laughs> What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, the different zones of Venice, of old Venice. Uh, Dorsal Duro here, this is my favorite one. Canareggio, Castello, Santa Croce, San, Paolo, uh, San Polo. San Marco, of course, is a very famous one with with the uh, with the um, the piazza, and this one's sticking out of the back, which is kind of like almost like a reject. This is Giudecca. You've seen that on the channel. It's across the water from me. It's Giudecca, so it's a little. It's actually separated by water from the rest. So these are all connected. You can walk from San Paolo to Santa Croce to Castello. You can walk, but there's water between all of these and Giudecca. You have to take the boat. In fact, when there's a strike on the public trans transportation in this country, and certainly on the uh, boats, the public boats here, the number two has to keep going, even if there's a strike, because that's their only way to get over from Judeca. So they can't do that. You know, we always have the option to walk, but they don't have the option. That's why they're over there. And that's what the Ferro di Prua represents. It's a little kind of map of the areas of, of Venice. Oh my God, you can only see you. I just fucked that up, I'm so sorry. Thank you guys. I'm a mess here. You are not sharing. Thank you guys, you're all telling me, like you idiot, we don't see. 
Uh, let me do that again. So <laughs> there you are. Canal Grande is the shape, that long shape. You can see that now, right? Yeah. Canal Grande. And these little blades coming out are all the different areas, right? Of, you know, San Marco, San Paolo, Santa Croce, Castello, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Judecas on the other side, you see it pointing backwards. The water between them, separating them. This arch here is the Ponte di Rialto. Sorry about that, guys. I just had to re-share and uh, that fucking website fucked me up because it was full of bullshit. <clears throat> this orange thing in the way, like it's, oh, get it, get the hell out of here. Get out of here. So that is, it's a little crazy little kind of illustration of the, of, of Venice. Representate, uh, it's a representation of the different areas. This is different now. They say here, they say this is Torcello, Burano, and Murano, these extra little pieces. But actually, I heard that's not, it's, they're actually religious. There's different theories about what those are. Some people think they're, um, they represent the other islands like Murano, where they make the famous glass, and Burano, with all the famous little different colored houses, and Torcello, which is one of the oldest areas of Venice. But the, actually, I heard they were uh, they represented different churches here. I've got to investigate that more. And actually, a, a guy I met like about a year ago offered me one of these real ferros, the Ferro di Prua. Like a real one from a, like an old used one from a, from a gondola for seven hundred bucks, and he's like mounted on a mounted on a big piece of of um, stone, and leave it like at the entrance of your apartment. It's the coolest, like cool accessory to have. Like it's very stoic. It's like having it's better than having some sort of big statue or something like that. It's very Venetian. I'm half tempted. But that's, you know, this is the canal and the different sestiere. I'm so sorry, but not sure in that area. I fucking messed this up, whatever. Anyway, um, let me put back up this video so you see it again. So here was the idea. This is what we thought we'd do, right? See the way the watch is kind of plain. This is like there's no detail on the on the um, bezel or anything. There's only one brush part on the outside of the bezel. Everything else is brushed. It's 300 meters water resistance. It's 44 mil watch, so you need a decent size wrist for it. Uh, there's the Ferro di Prua. Like there's a bunch of them right there. I'm going to do a classic fucking zoom in, like I always do, right? Focus pull. Uh, 14 millimeters thick, 51 look to look, 22 mil um, bracelet look to look. And there is a bracelet version, which is coming up soon. This is the red. So what we thought was this, right? And I have them right here. I'll put one on. I'll put the blue one on because you're seeing a lot of the red. <clears throat> Again, this is not high horology. This is a beater. You know, you buy this for the summer. Bring it to the beach. It can go underwater. It can fucking survive anything. This thing is a tank. There's the lads going off there in the gondola. But it has a real connection with Venice, which I don't think any other watch brand can boast. <clears throat> so the idea is this, right? You know the way watches, like, people say, oh, scratch up your watch. Don't baby it, you know. Let it get worn in. Let the scratches and the dings happen. It'll give it character, and it'll make it yours. So we thought this is like a, a blank canvas. Like, we'd encourage you to get it out there, just like the ferro at the front of the gondola. 
it get they get worn down, they get rusted, they get fucking beat up. They, you know, because they're at the very front, they bash into other gondolas, they bash against rocks and so on, walls. And we would encourage if you get one of these watches to get it out there, beat it up, scratch it, ding it, gouge it, give it the character of your own. That this brand new is just a blank canvas. Don't baby the watch. It's built to be abused. It's built to get out there. Go swim. You can swim anywhere you want with this thing. You can dive. And it can take a beating. It's got that SW200. It's a muscly movement inside. And it's closed back. There's no exhibition back nonsense. I'll show you the back in a minute. And it'll fucking take a beating. Gouge the shit out of this thing. Scratch the hell out of it. Give it some character that makes it your own. And then that makes it piece unique to yourself, right? Use those brushed surfaces. Now, everybody will probably want to know price. What you're seeing there on the rubber or on the leather is 500 bucks, 500 euros. And on the bracelet, which you'll see in a minute, is 600. And if you get it on the bracelet, you get the straps to switch over. Easy peasy. So I have the rubber on me right now. On, I'll show you in a second. But you, you, these are better shots anyway. <clears throat> we'll probably do more. We'll probably expand our idea. There's the bracelet, by the way. It's a fucking big beast. I can't show you in the other shots because there were only two in our first batch that came in there were only two and they sold out immediately so the one i'm wearing there is even signatured for someone because we have a little laser machine and we can put like a name into the thing and so on but they sold it so we have another batch coming in uh soon but it's a big chunky hefty this is a big hefty fucker watch it's big it's 360 now steel it's a big hefty chunk of watch there's no doubt. There it is on the rubber. Oh, this is the Tiffany. Now, this one's turned out to be crazy popular. I didn't like the idea at first. But this is turning out to be something. People want the Tiffany. Now, here's the funny thing. Tiffany, is, Tiffany green is a weird green. And when I first saw it, I said to Simone, I'm like, I was like, is that fucking Tiffany? Like, that's weird. And he goes, no, it's it. Like we we color corrected everything to make sure we actually went they actually went around to Tiffany right here in Venice and made sure all the colors were identical. It is really it's just that Tiffany blue is a weird weird looking blue. It's a very green weird blue. A lot of watches get you know coined as Tiffany color, but they're actually not really Tiffany color. There's the loom on the red. <clears throat> it's pretty good loom. It's what you'd expect from a $600 watch. It's, you know, no better, no worse. And there is, that's the Venice flag in the background. That's on the other side of this room that I'm sitting in. And that's the red to go, you know, that matches up with it. It's a, like a vermilion more than a red. There's something orange in the red. So that's why we chose that red. That's the most Venetian color maybe ever. And that's the back. My name is not on these watches, even though we kind of put our heads together because it's Frollo. It's connected with the family there. I might do a special edition with them at some point in the future if these things take off. But this, these are the first editions. And the Frollo family go back over 100 years. Way over 100 years, but over 100 years in, uh, in uh, jewelry here in Venice. And this is the case that it comes in. It's a nice kind of flight case. So, crazy, right? <laughs> I never thought I'd be involved in like putting a watch together. So let me show you um, right here on the wrist. Here's the blue. Looking good. Nice, yeah, on the rubber. 
I don't have an example of the bracelet here, unfortunately, because as I said, they sold out immediately. But it's nice. And I have the red and I have the Tiffany here. I'll show you all three. So uh, if anybody wants to buy one now, ahead of time, before I actually do the proper announcement video and the purchase link and everything, you can buy one. I'll tell you right now how to do it. And I'll send it to you directly myself. My personal favorite is the red. But people love the fucking Tiffany. I don't know what it is. They're just Tiffany. Maybe it's because the summer is coming up and this nice bright Tiffany blue is perfect for the summer. Maybe it's because of that. But, uh, yes, if you want one, you can uh, PayPal me, the timeless watch channel at gmail.com. It's the old name of the, of the channel, the timeless watch channel at gmail.com. If you want it on the bracelet, which I showed earlier, it's 600 euros. Shipping is 30 bucks. And if and you get both straps, you get the leather and the rubber. At first, I thought it was only one, but it's actually, for those of you in my secret circle who already bought them, you're actually going to get all three straps if you brought, bought it on the bracelet. If you buy for 500 euros, you'll get the rubber and the leather, the stitched leather and the rubber. So the bracelet is just extra, so extra hundred bucks for the bracelet, which is understandable because it's a big chunky fucker. <clears throat> nice. Boom. Strong watch. And again, beat the shit out of this thing. Get it out there, scratch the hell out of it, give it character, you know, give it some love. Get that bezel all worn and, you know, put some dings in it. Give it some life, you know, because a lot of our watches are built for that, but we never do it. <laughs> I have an AP diver that can go way underwater and survive all sorts of beatings. But I'll never do it. They'll never fucking see the underside of an ocean ever. <laughs> and it's never going, apart from the, in the Ireland video on, on, on the beach with it, and I stick it under the water. But I'm not bringing that thing. When, when the good weather starts again, I go to Toledo and I'm fucking swimming, and climbing rocks and shit. I ain't bring. I'm going to bring a Seiko or I'm going to bring one of these. <laughs> of course I am. I can bring that fucking expensive watch out there and that's one of the terrible kind of contradictions of our hobby so i think it makes sense to make something like you know something beefy and ready for a beating what do you guys think uh let me see conair likes the red version yeah that's my favorite out of a lot it's the red do you like it on the on the leather is that your your taste or on the rubber Hopster, I don't baby any of my watches. Rolex, Panerai, Grand Seiko, I just wear them. I don't care about res resale. Or, listen, this is the that's the best thing to do. But a lot of people can't afford to think that way. You know, because if they need to get out of the watch, then they, you know. Or they just know what the dollar value, and it feels like sacrilege to, like, bring a fucking crazy expensive watch into the water or start beating it up. But if you're in that position, then you're doing the right thing with the watch. <clears throat> William Trafton, Tiffany Blue, a bracelet for me, please. Signed by you and your friend. Yes, well, certainly. We have the Venice thing, the postcard thing. And I, I do, I'm an amateur scribbler, sketcher, artist, whatever. And I'll, I'll do a little sketch on it for you and get Simone uh, to sign it as well. Certainly. So let me put in the, um, the PayPal. The Timeless Watch Channel at gmail.com. Hope I spelled that right. So that I've already we've already had orders. So, um, but if you want to get in on the the first batch, the second, the last half of the first batch, and the second batch are coming in before I make the like the real video with the music and all that stuff. You know, you here's your chance to get in on them. 
I have to say, they're really, really impressive sitting here at my desk. I'm really proud of them. I mean, it's more Simone's project, you know, but we put our heads together. He was only going to make those smaller ones, but I was like, come on, give me a fucking real watch that I can wear. <laughs> Something I'm proud to stick on my wrist and fucking get beat up a little bit and stuff like that. And I think, I think we hit the perfect mark on this. Where's my uh, thing? Uh, yeah, so the timeless watch channel at gmail.com. Just shoot me. It's 600 on the bracelet, and you get the two straps, or 500 for just the two straps. And it's that's euros. I'm sorry, but it's just the way it is. Um, Pavic AT. That's why my SKX gets most of the wrist time. It's probably my favorite watch. It's exactly that. If you like the SKX, this this is going to work for you. It's kind of the same kind of thing. <clears throat> I don't abuse them either, says Hobster. And I have a master of G and the other shit of jobs, sites, and gym, etc. They are scratched from where, yeah, some people just, they don't care. But like my root beer can take a beating, can take a scratching, can take all, but I'm not, I don't want it. It's too fucking pretty. It's like a jewel. So I don't want to do that, you know, to the watch. So, um, sorry, I'm in the background there. So yeah, um, watch warrior 15. No, it's 14 mils thick, 14. It's not a super slim watch. Okay, just so you know. It's not like 12 mils or anything. It's a thick, it's a thick watch. It's a hunk of fucking steel. That's what we're doing for the moment. Maybe next year we'll do something new. But uh, it's a pretty good start. I think this is pretty nice. Good looking watch. <clears throat> I'm with you. Crackers 2549. I'm with you. That's when I bring up a King Samurai for water. Yeah, that's what you do. I mean, that's personally what I do. I mean, the, my APs can handle a lot, but I'm not going to. I'll never know because I'll never do it. I'm sorry. $50,000. No, thanks. I'm not doing that. You know, if I was a super gazillionaire, then it wouldn't matter. But then I wouldn't be as passionate probably about these things. Blue is universal. The blue is nice. Blue will work with anything. The Tiffany, I still, I still have to get my head around it, even though people love it. It's like the most popular so far. For me, it's the red and the blue, but whatever. So this is why you give a little bit of selection. The important thing is that it has a symbol, a real symbol from Venice that people need to know about. They need to understand what it means. If you ever get into a conversation at a bar and somebody asks you what the fuck is that on your watch dial, you can tell them all about the Ferro di Prua. And they might be like, oh yeah, I was in Venice years ago and I always wondered what the fuck that thing was. So it's a conversation starter. And that has a real connection with a real Venetian family with history in Venice. All my sequels are blue dials, says Stephen Ritter. <clears throat> Joey Pastor. It looks like the blue sly. So that mix works well. Blue sky, do you mean? <clears throat> Leather all the way for me, says Connor. Like, yeah, man. It's kind of got that, because the stitching, it's got that vintage vibe going on, which is nice. <clears throat> John Doe, 200 times better than the Shite Nico selling for twice the price. Don't get me started. <laughs> yes, I'm well aware of that. It's got the, the SW200. It's a fucking workhorse beast of a, a movement that's why zero s chose it because they wanted to. their watches are tanks as well try breaking a zero s watch good luck and i'm so proud how these came out because this thing is fucking beastly as long as you make sure that crown is down you know locked down solid this fucker will do anything so it's definitely coming with me out on the bike on lido on the beach 
and I won't even think twice, you know. Won't even have to worry about my watch in any way. Just fucking beat it. Just like I do with my Seikos, which I love. Just love that. <clears throat> Bala's not digging it. Okay. Looks even big on me. Really? 44 mil. SW200. Should not be in four, 14 millimeters with flat crystal. Yeah, it's um, it's sapphire crystal as well. I forgot to say that. Uh, well, the, all the Zero West stuff is at least that thick. So I don't know. But hey, if it was three grand, maybe you could start nitpicking at these things. It ain't three grand. Zero West stuff is all three grand, 3,500. This is 600 bucks, baby. 500 on the rubber. We're not trying to sell you high horology here. You think I don't know what high horology is? <laughs> I know. The price reflects the product, fellas. <clears throat> Have a cigar, says David. No, Jesus, God. Listen to the voice. It's already deteriorating. I'm turning back into... I'm turning back into Sam Elliott for the end of the show. <clears throat> Pavic, I think you limit your market due to the size. I have a decent risk, but won't go above 42. The other one is available but i it's not my thing i've nothing to do with it if you want you can grab yourself one but to me it's i mean for one it's a quartz watch it's slim as hell it's really slim lighter watch and uh, that was frollo's first conception it's nice it's cute and i think it's like i think he wants 250 for that one you know for me it's yeah, it's it's cute. It's nice, you know, nice little gift or whatever, something memoir of uh, Venice. But it ain't it ain't you know that big glory. You know, this is for bigger guys. You know, hey, if I made a little watch, wouldn't it be weird? <laughs> They'd be like, oh, no, she made a forty millimeter watch. What the fuck is that about? He's going on about watch size, and he makes a 40 mil. <clears throat> Not screen sharing all the stuff from earlier. I'm so sorry, guys. That was fucking terrible. Uh, sometimes I have brain farts. John Doe, I think the rubber is better. If you have an average size wrist and out in a big watch and rubber strap tones down the overall size. Yeah, it's, it feels a lot bigger on the on the bracelet on the bracelet it really feels like a huge fucking thing you know it's a big watch but uh yeah rubbers and and the the uh, leather they slim it down quite a bit you know it's it's true i suppose the rubber is the most utilitarian version of this watch and again it's that watch you throw on and you just you know you get it beat up but it's not completely without substance it's connected to Venice in a, in a special way, you know, family made, homegrown way, a special connection. And if you ever do come to Venice, fucking wear your Frollo watch and go in and see Simone and say hello and go, hey, you know, make him really happy, make me really happy too. So, yes, uh, the timeless watch, the timeless. Watch channel at gmail.com. Just PayPal me 600 for the bracelet, 500 for the other. And you, either way, you get all the straps, you know. Should be interesting. Um, good extra watch. Good summer watch if you're not interested in uh, throwing down a lot of money. And at least you know that uh, you're getting something kind of unique. You know, you could buy a Seiko. By all means, do. I fucking love Seiko. I love all my Seikos. And they're normally what I wear to the beach. But that won't be happening this year because I have these. Um, you know, you're not going to see any of these around. It's a 
fairly unique thing. Small, mini, mini micro brand stuff. Bala, true. 500 for Sapphire and SW200 is fair. Yeah, that's what we feel too. That's how we feel about it. Trust me, the two of us, both myself and Simone, know very well what fine neurology is. There's no arguments there. He wears a fucking 1960 Daytona, you know. Forget about it. <clears throat> Crackers, thank you so much, man. The watch is right up your alley. Looks like it's built like a tank. It is fucking rock solid. Believe it or not, fun fact, made in the same place here as Venezianico watches. <laughs> same company here that build watches. You have to give them all your specs and all the design notes and the colors. And honestly, they sent the first ones, oh, it was months ago, and the colors were all off. And you're like, no, it's not working. They're not the they're not right. And we had to kind of start over again and send everything back and fine-tune the colors because we wanted the colors to be just right. We wanted that red to be, not be a red, but a vermilion, you know, because red is a <clears throat> relatively new color. Back when the Venetian flag was first <coughs> made, red didn't really exist back then. You're talking 1,600 years ago. <coughs> Only vermilion existed back then which was kind of a deep orange approaching red. And that's what this is. Even though it kind of registers to the eye as red, it's not, it's not fire engine red, you know, or post office red. It's, it's a different, or blood red, it's different. And that's why I love it. This is my favorite of the three, but I'll probably change over to the blue maybe for the beach. Be nice. Anyway, yes. Um, yeah, Bala, sorry, yes, and people are asking about the price. It's euros, 630, so six for the watch with the bracelet, and you get the two straps, 30 for shipping. And I'll do that personally, and I'll send you a little nice um, Venice postcard. This is before we actually do the big announcements, so you're going to get ahead of everyone. <clears throat> okay. A two-year warranty, the whole bit, the whole usual stuff. I love the vermilion, says Crackers. Yeah, I do. That's my favorite. I have the uh, the Seiko as well, the Shoru with the vermilion. That's beautiful as well. I like vermilion. It's a great color. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to go over. Uh, Shane McGregor, uh, best of luck, Oshin. Hope this is the start of a fantastic adventure. Yeah, me too, man. You know, I feel like next year we'll try something else, you know. And we'll go through it. As long as they're affordable, it's okay to try out different stuff, you know. You don't have to commit to a certain, you know, crazy amount of money. And I think we'll what we'll do is we'll just make them and sell a certain amount and then stop. And then make a new one and then stop. And that's it. If you get in on it, great. If you don't, you're out. That's it. So, yeah, there it is, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to me rant about the other stuff. Uh... Again, soft announcement, soft, soft release for you guys and for you guys only. Um, where did I put that fucking address again? The timeless watch channel at gmail.com. <clears throat> My voice is about to go. <clears throat> I've been taxing it all night. The timeless watch channel. Oh, what's the power reserve? The power reserve on a, on a SW200. What is it? Is it two days? Is so it 40 hours, 41 hours? I believe so. Just look up the SW200. <clears throat> I think it's two days. Again, fairly standard stuff, you know. If it was exceptional performance in any particular way, you'd be looking at more money. And that's the way it is. But, you know, you look at the Zero West stuff now. I know Zero West have a lot more going on and connection with history and the piece of the you know, plane in the back of the watch and all that. You're looking at three grand, guys, three to four grand. Totally different kind of thing. I would say the exceptional thing about this are two things, if you want. One is its connection with Venice, because it's a real or true connection with Venice. And two is it's a fucking beast. And, and bang the hell out of it and scratch it and give it tons of character. I'm going to start doing that 
as soon as humanly possible. I just got to finish filming them for the video and then I'm out and about with the thing getting it scratched up, you know. Okay, guys, I'm going to go over to Dirk in, uh, on the eye bashers. I'm going to end this. Just leave it running. 30, 38 hours power is there, says Travis. Thank you, man. <clears throat> rust color, not quite. Uh, more vermilion than rust, says Colin. I'm going to go over and talk with Dirk and do a classic eye bashers, guys. Just leave it running, and it should pop you over there if you have autoplay on. If not... Uh, just type in iBashers in YouTube and you'll find it and hit the video that says live and you'll find it. Thank you, Watch Warrior. Thank you all for listening. Have a lovely Friday night and I'll see some of you, maybe hopefully all of you, in about 10 seconds. Just leave it running and it should go over. If not, iBashers, classic iBashers with me and Dirk for the next uh, two hours or so. See you guys. Thanks for all the super chats, people. Let me, oh shit, did I miss any? Sorry, let me just check. I'm sure I fucking did. Ali, I got Ali. Oops, sorry, Travis. Dark side to illegal immigration is that many of them immigrants are exploited and paid less than minimum wage to work. Yeah, if they're paid at all. Definitely, I totally agree with that. Uh, chalk flew up 10 bucks. Good show. Hope you're feeling better. I'm getting there, man. After talking there for two hours, it's kind of getting rough. Shame, a great, great topic there, dude. Delighted for once. I don't agree with all of what you say. I need whiskey. <laughs> uh, Tanga, 10 bucks. Talking about starving, desperate people with an ice cream in his hand. Who have we become? I know Biden, you know, go fucking suck a dick. And just that was just the word. I know they caught him off guard and he was about to eat his ice cream, but Jesus Christ, don't answer a question like that with an ice cream in your hand. The, the optics were just so bad. But added to the list with Biden, Jesus, he's let us all down at this point. And I'm no Trump maniac either, you know what I mean? I'm just, I'm just so let down by that guy. Not that I had much hopes for him in the first place, but whatever. You are correct, sir. All right, guys, uh, thanks so much. Um, the time is watch channel at gmail.com. Let me know what configuration you want. Uh, let me, I'll size the thing as well if you want. I'll fucking size it myself. You know, tell me what you, how you wear your Rolex. You know, you're like, you wear one link out or all the links in or you add a link. Let me know and I'll be able to figure out, you know, because I have all the Rolex myself. I'll be able to, uh, let me know where you, where you put the pins in the, in the uh, clasp and I'll be able to figure out you know, how many links to take out and so on. I'll size the other bracelet for you so you can put it straight on the wrist. If you feel like me doing that, I'll do it for you. Direct. All right, fellas. See you over with Dirk in 10 seconds. Have a great week, man. Man. <laughs>